Hello, America. This is the DMZ America podcast for Friday, October 20th, 2023. Coming to you from the left, I'm political editorial and annoying cartoonist Ted Rawl. <laughs> and I'm equally annoying only from the right cartoonist Scott Stantis. I, love, I don't know why I love it when you say, hello, America. My father used to, uh, apparently there was a news report when he was a kid or, uh, you know, growing up before world war ii before america was in the war and it was this hello mother mother and father america and all the ships at sea was that's how awesome. it was to sign on it's on oh no it's yeah we should do that well i mean and that's like i mean hell it's not even a good movie but there's you know good morning vietnam is just an absolutely like compelling thing good morning vietnam i mean thank you, know, you. Like they went in and did the pitch meeting to with with uh, robin williams they're like so it's like this it's about armed forces radio and it's called good morning vietnam oh that's the title done we'll give you 10 million dollars you know and, uh, and, and about 18 pounds of coke for robin because that's, <laughs> that's all that movie is and he's a funny guy but after a while it's just like yeah can we well, he's okay. Not, the thing that's interesting about, I mean, he did a lot of really bad films, but he also did a few really great ones. I mean, it's really hit or miss, right? I mean, like, where's the one where he's like the um, the the homeless guy where he who is like touched? Oh, uh, the Fisher King. Oh, uh, awful! Fucking hate that thing. Really? Um, also, the the, the uh, Patch Adams. Ugh like kill me and i'm saying this and i, I shouldn't say this is the real patch adams uh, was a fan of my cartoons i don't know if he still is so that he wrote me a, a really nice letter one time oh nice so, that's very sweet but, but it's not his fault that the movie sucked and um well maybe it is his fault i don't know i don't know what happened there behind the scenes. but on the other <laughs> hand the world according to garp is amazing i've seen it more times than i can count and, and robin williams is amazing but John Lithgow is amazing. I mean, everyone's oh, great. Yeah. Glenn Close, amazing. Uh, it's a perfect film. And then, uh, you know, and then uh, I would say also Dead Poet Society, fucking amazing also. I'd say, uh, uh, oh, um, what's the one he did with Matt Damon and the other guy? Um, Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting is, it, it's not, he's not really important to that film. They could have cast anybody. Um, that movie's really about the dynamic between, Ben Affleck and, and Matt Damon, I think. And Mrs. Doubtfire is garbage. Garbage. Oh, my God. I mean, I have to say personally, I don't think drag, I think drag is a drag. I, I don't think it's interesting. And it's just like, it's just not a good joke. I mean, Tootsie was the best exam, the best attempt at it ever. And and look, when you when your movie sucks with Dustin Hoffman, your movie really <laughs> sucks. But they both were turned into musicals. <clears throat> Mrs. Doubtfire is now coming to Broadway. Well, I mean, they had to experiment because Broadway's never really had any, really been close to the gay community. So they had to yeah, like- this is true. This is they had true. to they stretch. Needed, yeah, there had to be a gateway drug in that <laughs> for, for the gays going to Broadway. <laughs> so, that is- um, <laughs> so yeah. anyway. did you see oh, what's his name patrick harris the uh he was doogie hauser um, neil patrick harris yeah neil patrick harris, and he was hosting the uh tonys and his op one one year his openings uh broadway it's not just for the gays anymore <laughs> it's, it's like very isn't funny. it isn't it isn't it really oh i um, love musicals come on i'm i, I you know well, we, yeah, well, that's, you know, we, we, I've been meaning to bring up that broach the topic <laughs> of your sexuality here. And uh, I guess there's no better time than now, but we won't do it. Now. We'll let that good time just pass. And, and so okay. from, from the, uh, from, from, from farce to tragedy, uh, let's move on to Hamas versus Israel. Uh, it's now uh, basically the, what, the October 7th, was when this happened. Uh, so th it's been 13 days into the conflict. And if you think about it, it feels like the world really has changed uh, in a very short amount of time. I mean, even as we speak, uh, thousands of tanks and APCs are massed along the border be between uh, uh, Gaza and Israel. Uh, 360,000 reserve troops 
um, are ready to go into battle. Uh, the, the Gaza has been bombed mercilessly uh, since October 7th. The uh, borders are still closed. There's a massive humanitarian crisis within Gaza. No water, no food, no medical care, no supplies, no technology of any sort allowed to enter the country due to the siege imposed by Israel. That's um, about to change, I think, in the next 48 hours. Well, I mean, that's supposedly the border. When I entered Gaza, I crossed through this border from Egypt. Uh, that border was closed at the time because the blockade's really been going on for 15 years. But um, they, that border uh, is technically supposed to be open, but the Israelis claim they have no way of of, of screening the trucks of, of aid supplies to make sure no weapons are going in. Uh, and I'm like, if only there were people whose jobs it was to look through things crossing the border and see if bad things were coming in, we would call these people customs agents is what we would yes, call Yes, I've them. heard of this. And uh, but I guess in, in, in the Israelis and the Egyptians have not heard of it. The, the Egyptians are, are poised to open the border. The um, the, the, the yeah. are, but these but they're dragging their asses uh, now. Yeah. Local time. It's now Shabbat or uh, in. in uh, so that's it. The border, you know, the border is not opening for another 24 hours. Um, we'll see. I mean, there's hundreds of trucks lined up. I mean, that might sound like a lot, but we're talking about 2.4 million people who've never been in worse shape and they've been in bad shape for a long time. So even if that border was open like yesterday, it still wouldn't be enough. Um, so it's a catastrophe. Um, so Scott, I guess I want to ask you, um, let's, let's talk about just sort of the basic, uh, the, the way that people have siloed themselves in this oh my God. politically. You're either oh on God. team Palestine or you're on team or you're on team Israel and, you know, I find it incredibly annoying. I, I think it should be possible. <laughs> That's a word for it. I think that it should be. Well, I am an annoying cartoonist. I, I think it's. I, sh I think it should be annoying and annoyed. I, I feel like there should be. It should be possible. I'm going to speak for my side. It should be possible to, to be on the left and say that what Hamas did on October 7th was absolutely disgusting and immoral and unethical and violates everything that the left stands for, which is about the dignity of the individual, um, protecting individual rights, um, the sanctity, uh, the, the sanctity of, of, of the human body, um, not attacking civilians. Uh, these were all civilians, um, even though I know there's like some sophistry that's, that's been boundy, bandied about among progressives that because of the fact that every man, every man and woman adult in uh, Israel is subject to military service effectively they're all soldiers but that's bullshit um at that rate then like there's no civilians in any country that ever had conscription and that's just not true um and then uh but you know you should be able to say that and say at the same time israel's rea israel's treatment of the palestinians is absolutely repugnant deplorable violates international law all basic standards of decency uh, that Israel should absolutely be isolated diplomatically, economically, and politically from the rest of the world for their actions mm -hmm. against the okay. Palestinians and violations of international law. But you should be able to say both. And I think on the right, you should be able to say um, that uh, you know you should be able to mourn the dead, the raped, and the and the injured and the traumatized Israelis, and at the same time acknowledge. That 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 you know it was a powder. The Gaza was a powder keg that was going to blow, and that they were warned repeatedly that you couldn't just pen in two million people, and that's two million people in Gaza plus five million people on the West Bank, and have them just kept in in cantonments in a pen in a concentration camp, and think that nothing bad was ever going to fucking happen, or that it was moral or okay to do it. I mean, you should be able to say, see, say, see the, the evil on both sides here, but also be able to see that like when there's an oppressor and an oppressed, the in this case, the oppressor is Israel, the oppressed are the Palestinians, that sympathy is always generally going to go to the oppressed even when they do bad things like they just did on october 7th right october 7 was an abomination i mean let's be abundantly True. clear and, and it's still they still hold what 150 uh, uh 
hostages, some American, some of them American. Um, Who are all dead. They're as good as dead, basically. You think? Well, I mean, how, I mean, how can you get them back? I mean, the only way you could negotiate for them would be to do something Israel's not going to do, invade. I mean, you know, once they invade, they're, those people are dead. I mean, they're going to be caught in the crossfire. They're going to be in tunnels that are bombed and collapsed, or they're going to be executed by by Hamas, right? I mean, there's they're 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 do, they're done for. There's no world in which like they're well, being I don't kept know. hostage, and then the Israeli soldiers like you know, like you are free, <laughs> you know, like, no, but I can see them uh, trading uh, the, um, the hostages for imprisoned Palestinians. I can see that happening, but not in the middle of a hot war. Is it a hot war? I mean, not yet. the other thing, well, is, it is, is a hot war. Yeah, it is a hot war, a bombing, a bombing, a relentless bombing campaign that has destroyed hundreds and hundreds of buildings in the matter of a week is a hot war. And, and, and like, we already know that the Israelis have already been inside Gaza. They've already launched ground incursions, like just uh, with individual units. It's not a full-fledged land invasion, but that's coming um, within days. If and I'm, I'm wondering, guess what is probably that over the weekend, I would think, probably tomorrow. What, is, what does it look like? What is, I, I, I'm still trying to get my head around what that looks like and what you hope to accomplish. They're going to go to the offices of, of Hamas, apparently, there are offices. There are, yeah. It's, it's a government. So, and they say that no one, that no one goes back. No one's got back into the office. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Um, well, they can't zoom because the Israelis turned off their internet. Well, do they have re we work there or how's this? I mean, anyway. So they're going to go. What? Why? What? And why do you invade Gaza? What do you accomplish? What are you accomplishing? And because I have to believe that Hamas has, you know, they, they saw this coming. They didn't think it would go un, you know, uh, unnoticed, uh, un, unnoticed. Yeah. Oh. Um, so a ground invasion, they've done it before, right? They've Israel has invaded Gaza before. Am I correct? I'm so trying six to, times. Say, well, OK, so I guess that would be a yes. <laughs> yes, um, it would be. What do you I, I don't. I understand this run to for revenge. You know, I mean, this was sure. we're going to. It's very similar to America's invasion of Afghanistan and also, frankly, Iraq. Uh, you know, we're someone's going to pay a price for this. Maybe you know, it, it's going to be a lot of innocents are going to get in the way, but by gum, someone's going to pay a price for this. I'm yep. going to punch. I'm going to punch somebody. Right. Um, right. and. Uh, it reminds me there's a great West Wing long story, the, uh, but John Goodman plays uh, a you know the acting president, and there's a crisis going on involving the Middle East. He says, "Well, she better this better happen, but but if this happens, I'm going to bomb something, and God only knows what happens next." Well, I mean, and that is what's That's, going on. And look, you alluded to it. You touched. You started it uh, when you said, "Like, look, Hamas had to know what's coming next." I mean, here's the thing. Um, like, let's put ourselves in Qatar, where Hamas's leadership is exiled, and they're hanging around, uh, pounding back teas and probably a few bourbons. And they say, and they're like, okay, so they've methodically planned through for a year and a half or more this attack that worked splendidly by all accounts, right? Caught the Israelis with their pants down. Um, and so, you know, Mossad never fucking found out about any of their planning, even though they built a, a, sam a fake Israeli settlement in Gaza to practice and train, right? The point is, this was a perfectly executed operation. So if I'm sitting in, so, you know, obviously, I don't think they ended the meeting at the part where they're like, oh, what do you think the Israelis are going to do next? No, no, they thought it through. They knew exactly what the Israelis were going to do. And the reason they knew exactly is because the Israelis have done it six times previous. They've done the ground invasion when there were a lot of rocket attacks or uh, when there were uh, three Israeli soldiers were kidnapped and held hostage. The same sort of thing. They did that in 2014. So, um, you know, they thought it through. They know what's going to happen. And so what, so the thing is Hamas cannot defeat Israel by itself. So what is there, you know, they have a card up their sleeve. They do. They have to. It's, what is it? 
I have to think it's my top. I think they have a pledge from Hezbollah to open a second front. I think ah. the pl- I think the plan is we're going to let the Israelis come into uh, into Gaza. We're going to get the fighting going nice and hot for them. We'll kill a bunch of reservists who are you know weekend warriors. They're not even weekend warriors. I mean, these are if you look at the pictures of these guys and women, these are like tech workers and like they work at the falafel stand. These are just dudes and dudettes. Um, so it's like they're going to draw them into the fighting, tie them down, and I think. The, I think the Israelis are playing totally into Hamas's hand. This is exactly what they want them to do. Even the bombing. The bombing makes it harder for the invasion force to capture block by block because it's all ruins, right? It's harder to fight among ruins than it is in infrastructure that's intact. So they're fucking up. And I think as soon as Hezbollah, Hezbollah will come in from the north in, in through Haifa, well, they'll attack Haifa. And things will turn ugly there. Now there could be an additional um, involvement. Syria, maybe. What? Although they're very tied up with the civil. Yeah, I was going to say war. he's still got the civil war going on there. But they do have they do have Russia watching their back there. Um, and then there's Iran, which has long range ballistic missiles with extreme accuracy. If Iran decided to target Israel, Israel would cease to exist. Um, they would. The, the you know there's only four cities worth of shit in Israel, um, it's like it's a small it's a very small country, um, yeah. So yeah, they would, and then you know of course obviously that would be uh, the end of Iran because the Israelis would launch nuclear weapons. Um, so, but it's like I think the Iranians don't want that. I think the Hezbollah thing is is they're trying to drag in everyone, and it's a game changer. Hamas is predominantly Sunni. Hezbollah is predominantly Shia. And um, and so if you have uh, the Sunni and Shia worlds united against the Israelis, Israel might not be able to beat that. And I don't think the United States has the appetite for joining a ground war to defend Israel. I think the U.S. Mm-hmm. has stretched thin through its proxy war in, against Ukraine. And I think public opinion is that we just did we just finished a war in Afghanistan and so I don't know. This could. There's a lot of we don't knows here. But I think. Um, but I, I I'm going to put right now. I'd say 70 30 chance Hezbollah will attack Israel. Um, you know they're waiting. They're keeping their powder dry. Well, I read some reports uh, just a few hours ago that there's been some Israeli troop movement along the Lebanon border. Border. So you may be right. They may be anticipating this, or at least they should. I'm sure they are. And then, like, or at least cutting it, shutting it down. And then, like the Houthi movement in uh, Yemen, where there's this long-standing civil war, um, they just fired a couple, uh, some missiles and some drones. Uh, according to the U.S., um, that's that was those were fired in the direction toward Israel, um, and they were intercepted by an American uh, missile interceptor ship in the Red Sea uh, and, and shot down. But I mean, this the, the, the possibility of regional expansion is not lost on anyone, right? I mean, the King of Jordan said that the, the Middle East stands on the brink of World War III. Um, I, I don't think with this, I don't think in our lifetimes, uh, international security has ever been um, as endangered or imperiled as it is right now. Oh, interesting. I don't read it that way. I, I read it as, I think the Israelis are going to go into Gaza as they have gone in before, clean house, do what they do, and leave. Uh, they've already ex- you know, uh, gotten back the number of lives they've lost uh, on, the, on the attacks that uh, from Hamas. And so they've got you know, if you're if you're going for and an eye so. for an eye, a two, yeah, they're a little at four bit more. eyes. They're at four eyes for an eye right now. Um, boy, I don't see this expanding like you to, see it. If but the thing I is ran- they, if they get rid of, but the goal, their war aim is so it is declared and it makes sense and I believe it <laughs> is to topple the Hamas government regime change. Right. That's the goal. Now the thing is, what happens next? Right. I mean, let's just say they succeed. I think it's going to take them six to six months to a year to succeed. Really? Yeah, I do. Well, I think you underestimate the if they if that's their objective. I think you underestimate the Israeli forces. Well, I also I, think Hamas is not going to just go. I mean, the thing is, 
they're look, these are guerrilla fighters. They're going to go yeah, under, it'll be like the you, Afghans. They, they're not wearing uniforms. They're going to go under. Exactly. How do you, I mean, and that's you where I get kill an idea. Yes. That's, that's where I get do. flummoxed. That, that's why you and I agreed years and years ago when they said, this is a war on terror. And you're going, what does that mean? Because here, here, here's my take on war. And as I get older, I become more and more anti-war, believe me. Uh, so, but if you're going to have one, do the, um, you know, the Colin Powell thing for and even, I, I don't zone. even think, well, flood the zone, but the fact is there's no zone to flood. If you don't know who they are, who's, who are you fighting? And yeah. Colin Powell, you war, break it, you own it. Right. Who, what is your war aim here? And that's why I'm asking you what you think Israel's doing here. They're going to get, they're going to wipe out, um, wipe out the Hamas. same well, as the you... U.S. and Afghanistan. Their aim was to topple the Taliban government from Kabul. They succeeded, but, all that happened was, but but they didn't win because right. the, all the the Taliban fled. They went into exile, and they hid out, and they went to ground, and they waited. That's what Afghans do, and that's what the Gazans. That's what the that's what the Hamas authorities are going to do as well. Um, here's the thing: what comes next, right? I mean, if you're Israel, you only have a few options, right? You can annex the the West Bank into Israel. They're not going to do that because they'd have to give them voting rights. They'd become right. Israeli citizens. That'd be two million people who would, uh, you know, change the the, the demographic of, of what's supposed to be a Jewish state. So that's out. Then it's like, well, we can have we can put them under the authority of Mahmoud Abbas and the Palestinian Authority based in, in Ramallah in the West Bank. He's 87 years old, corrupt as shit, weak as shit, makes Joe Biden look spry. He's going to be. <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, and, and and has no respect whatsoever in Gaza. He would be like the Hamid Karzai, but yeah. he would never be able to control it. And the Israelis would be right back where they started in five years. So that's out. So then it's like, OK, you can impose it. You can recruit a bunch of Arab puppets to do this. Or you could bring in like a sort of you could sort of have a post-1945 Germany occupation kind of zone kind of thing where you had like a sector that was controlled by Saudi Arabia, another one by Oman, another one by the UAE. So it's kind of like we brought in the Arab world to govern their own people. Mm. You could do that. But you could do that, but that's not going to happen because they won't if, do you, it. If, if they won't if you remember it. Biden came to, you know, flew to flew to Israel and was supposed to have a summit with uh, King Abdullah II in Jordan, along with other Arab, mm -hmm. interested Arab states, that got canceled. So yep, they're not interested right. in this. So they're that's not going right. to be they, a part of this. They can't do that. So yeah, they can't be seen as being part of, of oppressing their own, their own, the Palestinian people. Even well, if it, they repress their own people, let's be honest. Exactly. But they can't <laughs> be seen by the Arab street, as they say, uh, to do that. So I don't think the Israelis have thought this fucking through. I don't think mm -hmm. that, they've, um, that they have a new regime. This is the same mistake the U.S. made in Afghanistan and Iraq after deposing Saddam Hussein. They didn't have an acceptable regime right. to replace it. In Libya, after uh, Hillary Clinton and Obama conspired to get rid of Gaddafi, again, they didn't have an acceptable regime and it's still a failed state now. Um, you know, good thing for Syria that they kept that Assad hung on because ISIS would be running the whole fucking country. If right. Clinton yeah, had actually, you're right. And that's what, you know, you think about Iraq would not be the basket case it is now if Saddam was still in power True. As, as horrible as that is. And as horrible, it's a statement uh, of fact, though. a ruler was so, um, well, OK, I guess we're this weekend. We will wait and see and what uh, what transpires. I mean, what do you think about, I mean, the thing about what's interesting here is the Israelis are not dumb. So why are they doing such a dumb thing? Why are they're they playing the, into Hamas's hands? It's what I always say. I've said to you, I've said to other friends, I've especially said to my children and to my wife, don't do anything. Don't make big decisions when you're angry because you will make stupid decisions. Mm. And that's what's happening here. They had a terrible thing foisted upon them a vicious barbaric act and their reaction is not being thought through because it's, it's almost, you know, listen, it's almost impossible to think clearly when you're that hurt and that pissed off. That's what's happening here. And that trend it's because they're such a young country that they're such hotheads that they haven't learned this the hard way. Like, like think about like, like in, like in, um, 
in Niger, right? There was the, the French backed government was overthrown by a military coup that was mm-hmm. partly supported tacitly by Russia. Um, and like, so now the, there's a military junta and uh, President Macron ordered all French troops and French nationals out of Niger. And the Nigerians are like, yay, we won. And I'm like, Mm-mm. Nope, the French, nope. The French are coming <laughs> back next year. Like, because, because you know, the French invented the, 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 the line, revenge is a, is a dish best served cold. And, <laughs> and it's true. It's like, we'll be back. We will get our peace. Ted, stop the time. Can you stop the recording for a second? Oh, sure. Hold on. I just have to. So what I'm looking, he, what I'm seeing here, Ted, is uh, Israel is reacting very much like the United States did after 9-11. You know, we're, and I just said it a second ago, we're going to hit something. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to hit it and I'm going to hit it hard. Well, the Israelis um, know what they're hitting. They definitely know that. They just they don't know, know what, 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 how to clean up the mess that they make after they've, after they've made it. And before because we tie this everything up, you can mentioned- get worse. Every yes, situation you- can suck and still get worse. Yes. And you mentioned Iran coming into this. What does that what does that look like? Let's say Iran r- ridiculously and they won't because Iranians are pretty smart people. Yeah, they don't want n- to. But let's say they launch a missile from Iran into Israel. Well, and you're first right, of all, Is- it will hit the target. You say that. Why do you why are you so confident that their technology is that good? Iran is a modern country. It's like Europe. I mean, I've been I know, but if they have like Chinese or Russian missiles, you're lucky if you hit the friggin' continent you're aiming. No, at. they have very accurate ballistic missiles. They have long range ballistic missiles that could hit right. anywhere in Europe, uh, in Asia. Well, the, yeah, but how accurate are they? Remember the Silkworm missile? That really was, and I'm not kidding. That thing, if you were if you were in Beijing and you were aiming at Taiwan, you may or may not hit, you know, Wyoming. Yeah, well, that's not true about China anymore either. I mean, well, China because, can put well, a probe on the moon now. It's a different world. Um, well, right. And they also, don't forget that technology. They did prior to- Now there's uh, GPS. Bill, there's tele- yes. they, can, they can adjust the telemetry while the, while the missile is in progress. But They're prior not just, to the- It's not a glorified like mortar where they just aim in the direction. And if, if the thing falls short, they just crank the, they crank the, the thing so it goes at a higher angle. You know. And we can say thank you, Bill Clinton, because if you remember, it was the Clinton administration that loosened up restraint constraints and allowed China to get better technology so they could aim their missiles better. That's true. Way to go, Bill. Thanks, Bill and Hillary. <laughs> well, you on the other him. hand, that's the same technology that allows uh, married couples to uh, get from point A to point B without screaming at each other like, why don't you know how to read the fucking map? Oh, we still, uh, my wife and, and I still that. Any divorces have been saved by GPS. <laughs> it's, if, especially if, if, if Janine is in the passenger seat, I will say, okay, do we take a left or a right coming up? Left or right coming up? I don't know, because she's looking out the window like she's driving. I go, look at the fucking map oh on the God. screen. Meanwhile, this isn't my, hard. meanwhile my, my son, when he's driving, he looks out the side window like he's a passenger. <laughs> like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he does have his tongue slapped. With my with my face. with my ex-wife, I used to complain. I was like, she'd be like, "Oh, we can we can uh, switch to Highway 82 up here." Oh, is there a? I, he's always Ted. Is it a junction? It's like I. It's as if I said, "Gork na kork." She did literally Ted <laughs> junction. I was like, you know, on the map you can tell because there's a little circle that lets you know, or you can see the shape of the on ramp that lets sure. you know that because sometimes just because roads cross doesn't mean one sometimes goes underneath the road and that's it you can't you can see the road that you're going over but you can't get on the road that and, you're going and if you have a humvee you can get on the other road that's true <laughs> or yeah or an atv or or, 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 or armored yeah, Gene personnel and I, carrier Janine and i do not fight we just don't yell at, or ex, unless we're in the car so i, I don't know are you sure you're tangent. really married <laughs> <laughs> just but we're in the car holy crap it's like yeah. a sitcom. It's well, so, it's I'm telling so you, uh, you know, get get yourself a nice Garmin if you don't already have one. I love mine. Um, oh no, we use our phone. I just plug it in. I just, but you have to look at it. You and it, you know, I'm I'm driving. I'm on the freeway. 
surrounded by Alabama drivers. And so, you know, I, 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 I could use some assistance. Well, Which way do we turn? It's a simple question, Ted. It's a should, it should elicit a simple answer <laughs> left or right. Or not she'll go, no, 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 no. This gets better. She'll go, okay, right here. Okay. So I take her. So I get in the right lane. She goes, what are you doing? You're going to, you have to go that way. You mean left? <laughs> yeah. How God, she meant how right here, I, as in exactly here. Yes, like right here at this. At here, this time, at this point, at this place, I would like take, to turn <laughs> left. Of course, left. Yes, not. But no, no, we don't get the left or right stuff. We get the. Okay, you need to go up here. Mm. What the fuck does that even mean? I, I'm. By the way, I just want to put, make a. Uh, uh, just make an argument here that uh, you know dedicated GPSs <laughs> are in many ways superior to uh, the phone. And most notably, if you have no signal, you can be in places with no phone mm. signal, like rural Maine, for example. And man, let me tell you, on the Trans Labrador Highway, I was very, although that's kind of a bad example because there's only one road. It's hard to go wrong. <laughs> Turn left at the moose. <laughs> there's no, there's no, you're at the, you're never at the intersection of anything. But... How did we get off on this? Okay. I don't know. So... Anyway. All right, so so yeah, so uh, I guess the whole point is the the we we agree that the uh, Israelis are fucking up. All right, so we'll see how badly they fuck up and how many uh, innocent Palestinians they murder because there's really no other word for it. Uh, while uh, in the next uh, few weeks, unfortunately. But I guarantee you, the American press will play it, and it's not. It's this isn't a Jewish thing, a Zionist thing, a, a conspiracy thing. But we, you talked about siloing on issues. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you're either pro-Israel or you're pro-Palestinian. You're either pro-Ukraine or you're, I guess you could pro-Russia. I don't know. Oh, and by um, the way, cancel culture is back on the right now because like now right-wingers are demanding that like young college students who support Palestine be blacklisted from jobs on Wall Street. Oh, I saw that. Good for them. I love blacklisting. <laughs> are you now or have you ever been a member of the Palestinian Liberation Organization? Black, blacklisting whatever what could possibly go wrong all That's right so we're gonna, american we're gonna we're gonna end that here <laughs> along with the before the world collapses yes uh, we gotta scoot along we got some breaking news to talk about here we go here we go <laughs> 